Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you are joining me today. My name is Mrs. Hoffman and I am a fifth grade teacher at Delaware Elementary. I'm super excited to be with you today. We're gonna um, work a little bit with uh, mean again, but also then moving on to median. Before we do that though, let's um, take a second and do a quick refueling break. Today we're gonna do um, something called lazy eight breathing. So if you notice, here's my little guy. He looks like he's laying on his back. So you can see his eyes here. He's got his eyes closed and he's just relaxing. So you can either lay back or you can sit um, up nice and tall. And what we're gonna do is we're going to imagine that you have an eight in front of you. And we're just gonna move our finger. I'll move my finger and you can just follow along if you'd like. And when we go this way, this direction, we're gonna take a nice big deep breath in. So we'll go this way. And then let it out. Big deep breath in. And let it out. One more time, big deep breath in. And let it out. Fantastic. Now that you're calm, alert, and ready to learn, let's take just a moment and see if you can gather a piece of paper and a pencil for our lesson today. You won't need it right away, but it might come in handy um, as we get moving along. So while you're doing that, I'm going to come and move my board. Just one thing, and I want you to be thinking about the word mean. Last time we were together, we talked about the word mean. And I don't mean like, oh, that person's being really mean to me. They're picking on me. But we're talking about mean when we use it in math. So let's see if you can remember what mean is. When we last talked, we said that mean was the um, average. Mean is the, the math word for average of a set of numbers. There were three steps for finding the mean. In your brain, think about those three steps. I'm gonna give you a quick start here. Our first step is that you're gonna take your data, all of your numbers, and you're gonna put them in order from least to greatest. And in math, we call that putting them in numerical order. Our second step is to add that, those numbers to find the sum of our data. So we're gonna take all the numbers that we put in order, add them together to find a sum. Think carefully, what was the third step? If you said divide by the amount of data points that you have, you are absolutely right. That's a great memory. And if you didn't remember, that was a great refresher for you. So here's an example. I played soccer with my daughter and we played five times and I kept track of the number of goals I scored in each game. So in one game, I scored three points and then six, two, four, and five points respectively. So we're gonna find the mean. So here's that same problem. On your piece of paper, think about that first step. What's the very first thing that you need to do with each of our data points here? Take just a moment and see if you can do that first step on your paper. If you put your numbers in order from least to greatest, two, three, four, five, and six, you did an awesome job. Pat yourself on the back, that's wonderful. Our next step was then to add those. So I'm gonna give you just a few seconds to add those numbers together. You can choose to group them into um, sets of numbers to add, or you can just count them in your head, however you choose to add, but take just a moment. All right, hopefully when you added those numbers together, you came up with the answer 20. So the sum of our data was 20. Altogether, I scored 20 goals when I played with my daughter. We won't tell you how many she scored. I'm not a great goalkeeper. Our next step then was to divide. Remember that we need to divide by the number of data points we have. So think back, how many times did I play soccer with my daughter in the yard? That's the number we're gonna divide by. So we're gonna take that 20, Divide it by the amount of data points we have. Here it is. And see what you can come up with. Take just a few seconds. If you said that 20 divided by five was four, then you are absolutely correct. So I scored an average 
of four points per game. And remember last time we talked, we said that, that that average, that mean, should be somewhere in the middle of our data. If we had gotten a two or a six, we would know that we made a math mistake somewhere. Now that you've got that in your head and you remember how to do mean, take a look at these pictures. We're gonna check the next type of problem. We're gonna think about median. I want you to notice this picture. If you've ever driven down the Lloyd Expressway, you've probably seen this before because this is right here in Evansville. I want you to notice how on the right-hand side of the pictures, the cars are all driving away from us, but on this side, the cars are all driving towards us. And right in the middle is this big, giant concrete wall here. Do you remember seeing that when you've driven down the Lloyd Expressway? You probably have. If you've been on a road trip and you've been to a bigger highway, you might have seen a road that looks like this. So again, we have two lanes of traffic. The one lane drives away from us and the other comes towards us. And right in the middle is this big green grassy field. Both of those have the same name. They're called the median. You might have heard your parents talk about that before as you were driving. Remember, you want to stay on your side of the median. And so what do you notice about the median in both of these pictures? Where is the median in our road? Yeah, it's right in the middle. Well, it just so happens that the median in math is the middle number in our data. It's really a neat trick to help you remember. So just like the median in a road is always right in the middle, when we put our answers or our numbers in numerical order, the median is always going to be that middle number. So I wanna take a look just a second. Here are the steps for finding the median. It starts exactly like when you find the mean. You're gonna start by taking all of your data, putting it in order from least to greatest. But then the next step is a little bit different. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start on the outside and you're gonna cross off your outside pairs till you find the one number in the middle. So we're gonna do this using a deck of cards. You can do this at home, it's super simple. I will give you a couple of tricks though first. You're gonna to wanna to take your deck of cards and you need to take out any jokers or any face cards. So take out any jacks or kings or queens. They don't have a number value. So we're just gonna take them out and set them to the side. All of the cards that are left in your deck should be numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this over and I'm gonna choose five random cards. So there's a two, an ace, another two, a four, and a seven. I've got my five different cards here. I'm gonna mix those up a little bit. It just so happened I pulled them out in the right order. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow our steps. Our first step was to grab that numerical, or grab that data and put it in numerical order. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pretend that my ace is a one. So I'm gonna put my ace first. What would the next smallest number be? Yeah, if you said two, we're gonna put that here. What's my next smallest number? Yep, another two and then my four and my seven. So now I have my, my data ordered from least to greatest. My next step is to cross off outside pairs. What I really like about using cards is that I can take my cards and flip them over and then the numbers are no longer visible. So I'm gonna start with my two outside pairs, the farthest numbers away from each other, and I'm gonna cross them out. I'm just gonna turn them over. Then I'm gonna to come to the next outside pair, the next farthest, and I'm gonna cross those out. What number is left in the middle? Yeah, my two. So this is my median for this set of data. And we can do that as many times as we want. So let's try that one more time. This time I'm gonna grab seven cards. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, I've got some bigger numbers this time. Okay, think about step one, what was it? Yeah, we need to put everything in numerical data. So we're gonna look here. On your paper, take just a second, put my numbers in numerical data. You don't need to, or numerical order, you don't need to draw the cards, just write the numbers. So think carefully and find my smallest number. Put it on the left. Then find the next number and the next number. And remember that if you have more than one number that's the same, you need to include both of them. So I notice that I have two eights, I need to make sure I keep both of those eights in my data. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these back just a little bit. That's my smallest number is, whoops, sorry, let's try that again. There's my smallest number, my five and then my six. And then I have two eights. 
I have two nines and a 10. Did you include both eights and both nines? If you didn't, go back and add them in. Now what you're gonna do on your paper is you're just gonna take your pencil and you're just gonna cross off those outside two numbers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn them this way. Then I'm just gonna keep coming towards the middle. Can you already see what my median's gonna be? Some of you might already be able to tell. So my middle number is that eight. You can do this over and over and over again with your own deck of cards as many times as you want. Just remember to always put them in numerical order, least to greatest. So I'm gonna push these out of the way and I want you to try this on your paper now. So I'm gonna give you a set of data. We're gonna go through each step. Put your answer or your numbers in numerical data, numerical order, goodness gracious, and then you're gonna cross off outside pairs until you find that one in the middle. So here's your data. A three, two, seven, four, and eight. Take one second, see if you can put them in order from least to greatest. All right, let's see if you've got it. Did you do two, three, four, seven, and eight? If you did, give yourself a nice big pat on the back. Fantastic, step two, using that same data, here it is, we're gonna cross off outside pairs, so you're gonna take your pencil, cross them off, take a moment, see if you can find that median. All right, so here we go. We should have crossed off our two and our eight, and then our three and our seven, which leaves in the middle our four as our median. Did you get it? Great job, I'm super proud of you. Now this works anytime you have an odd amount of data. However, sometimes that's gonna change. So take a look at this data. I have a three, a six, a two, a one, a 10, and another two. How many data points are there on this one? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you're thinking ahead like I am, then you're thinking about how when you get to the middle, you're not gonna have a pair to cross off. You're gonna have two numbers stuck right in the middle. So let's see if we could figure out how to fix that problem. The first step is always going to be the same. We're gonna take those numbers and we're gonna put them in order from least to greatest. So go ahead and do that on your paper for me right now. Perfect, okay. Step two starts exactly the same way. We're gonna start on the outside and we're gonna come to the middle until we get to our middle two numbers. So we're gonna cross off our one and our 10. We're gonna cross off our two and our six. What do you notice about those two middle numbers? Yeah, we've gotta group them together. This is what we're looking for. We need the number that is exactly between two and three. So if you're thinking, well, Mrs. Hoffman, there is no number between two and three. Well, actually there is. There's no whole number between two and three, but there is a part of a number or a fraction or a decimal between two and three. So let me show you how you find that number. All right, so here's the data. We need to find exactly what's between two and three. There are two ways to do that. Do you remember how we were talking before um, about the mean? We're gonna skip this for just one moment. I want you to come right here. When we found the mean of a set of data, we took all of our data points, we added them together, and then we divided by the number of data points we have. You can do the same thing. Use the mean, the method for finding the mean, to find the median. So here were my two numbers that were in the middle, two and three. If I add them together, I get five. Now you're gonna have to really think about this one because you know that five divided by two won't come out evenly. But you also know that if you take that five and you cut it in half or divide it by two, you're gonna get two and a half. So right between two and three is the number two and a half. Do you believe me? I know it's very weird, but look right over here at our number line. This is another way that you can do it if this, finding the mean, is a little bit scary. So on my number line, I've plotted my points two and three. So here's my first, whoops, let's try that again. Let's try that again. I have to remember this is a touch screen. All right, so I plotted my two and my three, and I'm looking for what's directly in the middle. So if I think about this, I'm gonna put my fingers on each of those points, and I'm gonna find where they meet right in the middle. This point right here, halfway between two and a three, 
is two and a half. So right in the middle, that's my median. And you can use either of those methods to help you find the median when you have an even set of data. So let's try that. All right, so we're gonna find the mean of this set of data. This is an odd set, so you're just gonna find the one in the middle. Think carefully. Step one, what are you gonna do? Take a second and try it. Okay, let's see how you did. Did you put them in order? Five, eight, nine, nine, and 10? And did you remember to take both nines from your original set of data and bring them into step one? If you didn't, remember you have to have the same amount of data in step one as you have in the original problem. So don't forget to add all those numbers. All right, step two, think about what it was. You're gonna take that data and what are you gonna do with it? Take a moment and see if you can figure it out. Are you crossing off outside pairs? Let's see, five and 10, eight and nine, which leaves our median as nine. How did you do? Great, okay, this is a tough one. Okay, we're gonna find the median of this set of data. I'm gonna give you a hint, it's an even set. Okay, take one moment, see if you can write these in order from least to greatest. Okay, how did you do? Did you put one, two, two, four, six, and seven? Did you remember both twos? Fantastic, okay, step two, remember, you have to find exactly what's in the middle, and since this is an even set of data, it's gonna be a little tricky. Take a second, try step two. All right, so here's my data. I'm gonna cross off those outside pairs. What do you notice about the middle? Yeah, there's two numbers in the middle. So we have two ways that we can figure out what's exactly between two and four. Think about those two ways. There were two things that we did. Do you wanna use the mean to find the median? Or do you wanna do a number line? Take a second and choose which one you wanna do if you decide to do the number line, remember to write, draw the number line and plot both of your points. So you're gonna plot two and four and then tell me what's exactly in the middle. If you're gonna find the mean, then you're gonna use just these two numbers. You're gonna add them together and divide by two because that's how many numbers you have. Take a moment, see if you can find the, medi the median. Okay, so if you chose to do the mean to find the median, you should have added two plus four, which will give you six, and then you divide that six by two in order to get the median of three. Do you agree that a three is directly between two and four? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so let's try the number line. If you haven't done it already, draw that number line. You're gonna maybe start with zero and maybe end with five, so you're gonna draw that line. Mark one, two, three, four, and five. And what are you gonna do at number two and number four? Think carefully, what did my number line look like? Yeah, you're gonna plot those two points for me. So take a moment and you're gonna draw that number line for me. And on our number line, we're gonna plot two and four. How would I find what's exactly between two and four? Remember, we're gonna take our fingers, and we're gonna put our fingers on both of those numbers. Now, I have to stay exactly the same on both sides. 
So I'm gonna take both of my fingers and I'm gonna jump one number right to the middle. Where do my fingers meet? They're gonna meet at that three. So you're gonna be able to see that three is directly in the middle. So our median is three, just like you found here. How did you do? That was tough, huh? Yeah, great. So remember, you can try this at home too with cards. So let's take a deck of cards and let's try it again, but this time I'm gonna pull an even set of data. So I'm gonna pull six cards this time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Remember, my aces are gonna count as ones. Okay, so in numerical order, take a second. I'm gonna go ahead and move my cards. Let's see if you got the same thing. Okay, does your data look like mine? One, one, four, four, five, and nine. Fantastic, we're gonna cross off outside pairs until we get to the middle, here we go. Well, look at that happy accident. What do you notice about the two numbers that are right in the middle? They're the same. No matter what I did here, if I drew these on a number line and plotted four two times, they'd be right on top of each other, wouldn't they? And if I took these and I added them together, I'd do four plus four is eight, divided by two gives you what number? Yeah, perfect, four. So four, because these are the same two numbers, is going to be my median. That was a great happy accident. I love it when that happens. Let's try this one more time with even numbers. I'm gonna pull these cards out of the way. I don't think I can make that happen again, but we'll try. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh my goodness gracious, I think I made it happen again. Let's see, here we go. Numerical order, three, six, nope, I didn't get lucky this time. Six, seven, seven, and 10. Okay, cross off your outside pair, see if you can find the two that are stuck in the middle. Crossing off three and 10, six and seven. Okay, here are my two in the middle, I have two choices. I can take my two numbers, and plot them on a number line so I can draw my number line. I've gotta go all the way past seven if I draw that number line this time. I'm gonna plot the six and the seven, find directly what's in the middle. The other option is to take those two numbers, six plus seven, add them together, and divide by two. I think you're gonna find you're not gonna have a whole number here. So if this were a number line, what would be directly between six and seven? If you said six and a half, perfect. I am so proud of you. This is a lot of hard math work today. Let me show you some ways that you can try this um, in other ways at home, other fun ways to gather data. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I remember that cup stacking game a long time ago where you took cups and you stacked them up as fast as you can. So here's a suggestion. Find yourself six plastic cups. Now make sure these are cups that if they fall, they won't get broken and that mom and dad don't mind you using. You're gonna take those six cups and you're gonna time yourself stacking them this way five times. And so you're gonna use the amount of time it takes you as your data. So you'll have five different numbers. And if you're really skilled at this, you can actually take those cups and turn them over. It makes it a little bit harder to stack them that way. So you can try that. Of course you can use our deck of cards. Remember to take out any of the face cards, the jacks, the queens, the kings, the jokers, and all of those. If you don't wanna use the aces as a one, you could take those out as well. Do me a favor though, practice using even and odd number sets of data. All right, and then the other thing you can do, and this is super simple and super easy, think about all the people who live in your house. How many letters are in the first name of each person that lives in your house? So for example, my first name is Kathy. C-A-T-H-Y. So my first name has five letters, but my son is Christian. So C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Ooh, he's got nine letters. So my data, the data that's gonna come from my name is five, but the data that's gonna come from Christian's name is nine. So think about all the people who live in your house and write all the letters of their first name and use that as your data. If you wanna get really, really big numbers, you could use all the letters in their first, middle, and last name. 
You could even add in grandparents if you wanted or aunts and uncles, your choice, but have fun with this. I hope that you had a great time today. I hope that you really enjoyed our lesson. Today's secret code word is rabbit, so don't forget to tell your teacher. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.